Just lately, uh, we've had a lot of requests for retro type boards, twin fins, single fins. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of weeks, we've probably done at least four of them. Uh, it's a pretty tedious job when you get a board that's come from the 70s and you haven't got an old template to copy off. So you have to sort of start from scratch. And first of all, you have to pick the right blank. So with a board like this, we might take some measurements first off. Uh, or we'll also take the rocker and uh, we use some sort of aluminium flat edges and that can um, give us a guide as to what amount of rocker we need to um, recreate and you know we write all these things down we take a lot of notes actually but um, you know so for instance X amount of inches there tail rocker because it's a board from the old days this board's fairly flat but then it also has a lot of V in it in the bottom especially at the tail it's got almost an inch of V from tip to tip there flat up through there and then light V through here so we select a blank and whereas we might normally shape the board from right from the front of the blank when I was shaping this one I had to bring it right back off the nose to get the fullness of this nose into this blank and then also uh, to get the right rocker so done all that, I took all those measurements and then worked out where I could cut this one off which was oh, about six inches back from there and it's only five foot eight so I had to cut it from there to there so we plane up the blank once I've cut those bits off and get it nice and flat and clean clean up the top we also have to sort of take into consideration uh, the thickness so with the trusty old calipers you know measure the thickness of that board and um, planed up the blank to suit to get it to the same thickness so that's got me to a good starting point the next thing is to be really accurate with the template and the template is the perimeter of the board we tend to take measurements every three inches from the tail and every three inches from the nose up to about the first foot and then every six inches so those measurements are super duper critical to get the board accurate <coughs> once we've sort of got all those measurements then it's a matter of plotting in dots onto your blank and that's what I've completed here and I haven't cut the swallow tail yet, you leave that to last or otherwise you're just as likely to break your tips off. But we've got a pretty much perfect replica of the outline of this board here. And when I was measuring it, it actually was a little bit inaccurate in parts. And as you can see, it's had a lot of damage and it's, it's as heavy as lead. The other thing that's really important is the position of the fins. The distance perpendicular to the tail and the width apart and also you have to measure the angle into the nose you can't just put the fin on straight uh, they have to be tapered in so all these little things are, are really critical if you want to make a really good replica board and uh, I've been working on this one today and I'll probably finish it off in the next hour but um, the bottom shapes completely done and I've just been turning the rails so even with the, doing the rails, we mark in with a pencil on the bottom of this how much turn, how much turn and roll there is on that. So this was almost an inch in from the rail and it probably went rolled in about an inch that way. So those things you can mark in with your pencil on your blank and then create that shape. And of course foam, uh, it always amazes me just how good it is to shape. It's uh, with sandpaper with blocks you can sort of create what you want so this one's not too far off and as I said uh, we've done heaps of um, retro boards lately and Phil's matching the old colors and stripes and things like that and it's a it's a fun thing for a lot of people